So last week in the Gospel, Peter and John run to the tomb, and they see that Jesus isn't there, and they leave, believing. Okay, they don't believe that he's risen. No, they totally miss that. Instead, they think his body's been stolen. See, that's the way the Gospel ended on Easter Sunday. But if you read a little further, you're going to see that in the next paragraph, Mary Magdalene actually encounters the risen Lord. She talks to him. And of course, she runs off to tell the disciples about it. See, that's the context of this week's Gospel. Peter and John have seen that Jesus is not in the tomb. Mary's actually talked to Jesus. So you'd think they would all be rejoicing, celebrating, but nope. Instead, they're hiding behind locked doors. See, they're afraid that the people who killed Jesus are going to come kill them too. Jesus has risen from the dead. He is alive. He's conquered death. And they're hiding. They're living like it hasn't happened. Okay, follow me here. John and Peter should have known Jesus was alive. They saw all the evidence. Mary had told them he was alive. She had seen him, and still they're hiding. They've heard, but they don't believe. And then boom, Jesus just sort of pops into the room. I mean, one second, no Jesus. The next second, Jesus. See, Jesus could have knocked, and he could have sent a messenger, but he doesn't. He breaks into the reality, and in an instant, everything changes. They see his hands, and they see his feet, and they rejoice because Jesus really is alive. Jesus breaks in, and nothing is ever the same from that point on. So maybe you're like the apostles. You're hiding behind locked doors. You've heard about Jesus. You know people have encountered him, but you're still not sure. Or on the other side, maybe you're Mary. Maybe you met Jesus. You know he's alive. You're so excited, and you're trying to share it with your family. And they politely nod and say things like, well, I know you believe. So here's the deal. God breaks in when God breaks in. But when he does, it changes everything. If you haven't experienced that, it's really hard for someone to convince you. It just sounds too good to be true. See, Mary found that out when she tried to convince the apostles. And the apostles found out because Thomas, the one called the twin, who maybe looked like Jesus, he wasn't there when Jesus showed up. See, when Thomas came back, the rest of the guys swarmed him with excitement. They're like, Jesus is alive! He's here, Thomas! But Thomas, Thomas says, no, not until I see him with my own eyes and touch him with my own hands. It's so easy to judge Thomas for doubting, but I think it's more fair to say that Thomas was probably guarded. He wasn't going to take their word, not because he didn't trust them. He probably wanted to trust them, but to believe them was risky. See, Thomas, like the rest, loved Jesus. And if Jesus wasn't alive, it would be like watching him be murdered all over again. So what's the takeaway? Be patient with the people in your life who haven't come into encounter with the living God. I mean, share what you've witnessed, of course. Share your joy, share your stories of Jesus in your life, and trust that God wants to break into their lives too. But you can't make Jesus appear. You can't convince someone, but you can witness. You can pray. You can set the scene. You can plant the seed so when it is God's time, when Jesus does show up, it changes everything.